What's up guys, so this will be the last video in like a series of all the different frequencies and fundamental frequencies and harmonic numbers for all of standing waves, all right? So I'm just gonna go through the fundamental frequencies and wavelengths for all standing waves in AP Physics 1 because I know that after watching those three videos, this could seem super overwhelming, guys. I've been a student, I've been there, and I wanna show you that once we know how to derive formulas for the fundamental frequency, n is equal to one, we could do it for any standing wave, whether it's a string, whether it's a tube with closed end or a tube with an open end. Now, this is a review of the other videos. So if you're watching this for the first time and you're watching me do stuff and you're like, how the heck did that just happen? I'll leave cards as we go along to link the actual videos with a more detailed 15, 20 minute description of each, okay? So just the fundamental frequencies, let's start with a string. So a string, we need to look at the requirements to form a standing wave. So that's the first thing we're gonna look at, the requirements. Because when we know the requirements for a standing wave, that's gonna help us build the formulas for the fundamental frequency. So for a string, we know that we need a node at each end. So that's for a string. So a standing wave is formed when I have a node located on either side of the walls, on either fixed end. So then what I can do is I can draw, we know that between two nodes is going to be one antinode. Once I do this, this is the smallest requirement needed for a standing wave, that is the fundamental frequency. So this is going to represent n equals one, which is called the harmonic or resonant frequency. For a string, it's gonna be more harmonic, and then for a tube, for sound, it's gonna be more resonant. All right, so now, once I can do this, and we're gonna have this for a tube open end on one side, and then we'll have a requirement for a tube open on both sides. The next thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do is I need to compare the length of the string, L, to the wavelength, for that particular standing wave, okay? So here, for the sprint, for this string, I can say that L, which is the total length from here to here, is equal to one half of a wavelength. Now, what we can't forget is that this N1 has to go out in front of here. So I'm gonna actually erase this and remember that I need to put in N equals one, times one half of a wavelength, which I now can convert to L equals N times one half of a wavelength. This, students, is the big one, okay? Because now that is going to allow me to draw the formulas for wavelength and for frequency. If we remember, that for frequencies, I'll just draw it up here because it's where I have some room, that frequency equals velocity over wavelength. So now because we know this relationship, we can build wavelength and frequencies for all of the n numbers for that spring. So doing a little algebra and just rearranging this, we know that the frequency is now gonna be equal to 2L divided by n for any n number in a string that forms a standing wave. Then using this formula and plugging this in for lambda, I can see that the frequency, the resonant frequency for any string with a standing wave is gonna be equal to n times v divided by 2l. So that is gonna be the summary for just a standing wave at the fundamental frequency. Once I know this comparison at the fundamental frequency, I can then solve for these three relationships. Okay, so now I'm gonna erase that and I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but just do it for a tube with an open end. And I'm gonna be doing the exact same process. First, I'm gonna start with what is the requirement for a standing wave inside that tube? And I know that the requirement for a standing wave for inside a tube open in one end is I have to have one node at the fixed end 
and I have to have one anti-node at the open end. So here's gonna be my node at the fixed end, and here's gonna be my anti-node at the open end. So that is the smallest wavelength I can have. So once again, that is gonna be equal to n equals one. And we have to remember that if I want another quarter of a wavelength, I would not have an open A. So ends for these are only odd. So just like I did with the string, I'm now gonna compare the length of the tube by the wavelength. We see that L equals one times a quarter of a wavelength. All right, so for this, it was one half of a wavelength, n times this, but here we're just having just this part right here. So it's one quarter of a wavelength. So that leads me to this relationship. L equals n times one quarter of a wavelength. So this is how we find the harmonic, which leads to the expression for any n number that we can have, but n can only be odd. Now when I manipulate these, I can see once again that wavelength is now going to be equal to 4L divided by N, and the F is going to be equal to N times V over 4L. And once again, guys, that's quick. If this is like foreign to you and you're like, what the heck just happened? Then like I said, go back and watch the open end on one side, and you'll see exactly how I derived these. But I just wanted to show you that when you know the fundamental length to the uh, fundamental wavelength, that's all you need. So the last one we really need to look at right now is just going to be a tube open at both ends. Okay, so here I have a tube open at both ends. Sorry, this is a little wobbly. Um, so we have a tube open at what is the requirement for a standing wave? So requirement needs I need to have an antinode at both ends. So if I have an A here, and I have an A here, the thing that happens in between two A's is an N. So this is going to be N equals one. All right now with an open end tube, this could be for any integer. All right, it's not just for odds for this one because when I take the second time of this and double this, as you saw in the video, I can have N equals two. So now I compare the length of the tube to the wavelength the length of this tube is equal to the n number, one, times one half of a wavelength. This, guys, is half of a cosine curve. So it's one half of a wavelength, which happens to be the same exact for a standing wave, and it will hold true for the other ones as well. The wavelength of a tube open at both ends is going to be 2L over n, and the frequency, the fundamental frequency, is going to be equal to n v over 2L. So if we look, a tube open at both ends is the same as a string, the only one that's different. So there's only two formulas here. But guys, this is how we are going to find the fundamental frequency and the fundamental wavelength of anything by just comparing the length to the wavelength and knowing the requirement for the standing wave to happen. So memorize or learn these three things, and you are good to go. I hope that helped. Review all the other videos. I'll leave the playlist of all the videos right here so you can check them out. Subscribe, guys. Give this video a like if you are happy with the fact that I summarized it all in one video for you, and I'll see you on the next one.